Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave, episode 4. Today I'm going to be talking about a rare Atari game that I acquired. And uh, I just want to give a little bit of a, a shout out to the person that I got it off of as well. And uh, just a little bit of the history of the game, because it's kind of cool. It, it's not the rarest Atari game uh, out there. there. There are lots of games uh, for the Atari that are much more rare. And I'm talking about the Atari 2600 here, not the... 7800 or the 5200 or any of the, the computers uh, so this game is it, it's well if you go on Atari age I, I think it's very rare in in their um, uh, rating scale uh, and that doesn't mean it's always the most expensive uh, this game is a little bit expensive it, it's kind of neat though uh, it's called chase the chuck wagon which is kind of cool uh, and the only way well the reason why this is so rare in the first place is the only way to get this game back in it says here 1983 uh, was to uh, cut out UPC codes from uh, Rolston Purina dog food that's uh, it's strange I, I couldn't imagine today uh, any kind of uh, dog food pushing a video game like it's, it's just weird but I think that that was kind of normal back in the, that day um, Atari games were really uh, widespread. They were popular. Every business was getting into that market of, hey, we could have a game. Why not have, uh, you know, games made specifically for us that we could use for promotions? Uh, and it is strange because it's dog food. So, you know, people who had a dog were, first of all, were the only ones, unless someone was crazy enough to buy the dog food just to get the game. Uh, or um, or they had a dog and and they, they they chose this particular dog food. I don't know. Uh, frankly, I have a dog and uh, we we give her a specific kind of food, so I can't imagine having to switch brands just so I can get myself an Atari game. It, it's it's just weird. But anyways, that's that's just the way that this game went down. And uh, so because of that, I, I guess there, the amount of copies that they made, there was only so many that actually got sold that hit the market. And uh, the rest, I uh, probably went with the ET cartridges of the day and, and got buried in that landfill. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I started to actually look into to some rare games. And uh, this one caught my eye when I was looking on the, uh, the website for the uh, Atari Age website as being a really sought after game. And uh, so uh, one day I was, I was actually just browsing on, uh, on Facebook and uh, I saw a posting with this game and someone was like anybody want this and uh, and, the, and the one thing that struck me about this posting was uh, the game itself is very rare and I've heard this but it's even more rare if you have the instructions which I thought was cool this person has the instructions uh, the only other way to make this fully complete is to have the box and, and apparently that's even more rare so if, if anybody has a box, let me know, but <laughs> I doubt you'd have the box and not the game and the instructions. But anyways, this is this is what made made me kind of consider the sale. So, and, uh, you know, the, the instructions aren't much. I mean, it's, it's, it looks almost like a, uh, you know, photocopy, but I can tell it's actually on a uh, proper kind of card stock. Like, this isn't done in, in like, someone's uh, printer, right? And uh, you can see the wear, and you can see the uh, the degrading of the paper. So this is actually authentic, and this is how the instructions look. Uh, kind of a different style from what we're used to in today's games, where they come all full color and they're all pretty and full of pictures and and stuff like that. Like there there isn't there's not even a picture on here. It's it's just text, which is nuts. And it says here printed in Hong Kong. Okay, I guess they don't have printers anywhere else. Um, <laughs> But anyways, yeah, and, and the cartridge itself is in great shape. I mean, it's it's uh, it's got a slight bit of wear on the on the end piece here, a little bit of wear. But um, I mean, the board itself is immaculate. It's it's very clean. So uh, the lady Melissa that I actually got this from, she told me that this um, this was hers from day one. They back in the day, clipped out those uh, UPC codes and and ordered this game. So I know that this was an original owner. So, and and that's cool. And so I and I found Melissa off of uh, one of the Atari web uh, Facebook pages. I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. I I joined a, quite a few of them. So, but anyway, she 
so this was pretty cool and and she's a really nice person so uh, I was having some conversations with her about it and and yeah and she was so happy to to um, sell this to somebody who actually cared and and actually wanted to you know have this game so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to put this into my Atari nice nicely and, and slow. And I don't want to wreck it, and I'm going to do a little bit of a gameplay just so you can see what it looks like. Because the uh, the game itself, I mean, it's not the greatest. It's they they literally just found a very easy game and um, molded it around the main character, which I guess his name was Chase. I'm not familiar with this dog food. I'm sorry, but and uh, I don't remember these commercials back in the '80s, so. But anyways, uh, yeah, so they, they molded it around this this character, and it's really just a maze game. So you, you, you go through, like, a few maze games. So let me uh, put this in, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to the review. All right, here we are at my trusty Atari 2600, which I'm going to uh, give this game a whirl. Now, I'm hoping that uh, it's uh, because of its uh, cleanliness, and it looks like it's barely touched, uh, Let's hope that it works on its first first run here. Just put that in there. Just gonna flick that on. Look at that. Look at that. We have a game. Isn't that cool? Let's try and play a few games, shall we? Okay, here we go. Chase the Chuck Wagon. So, as you can see, it starts off with a title screen, which um, was uh, not bad for that uh, time frame. I mean, some games didn't even have that, so that's pretty cool. And one thing to note is that you actually don't hit the game reset switch to start this game. You you actually have to hit select. You can also pick your your difficulty level. There's there's two different levels of difficulty. They're not really that much in in between the differences. So I'm just gonna stay uh, go with A and uh, hit select. So there I am. I'm uh, Chase. I'm that little doggy in the running around there. And uh, you'll notice that there's a red looking ball thing. I, I don't even know what that is actually. And it's it's bouncing around the screen and what I can tell you about it is if I hit that I'll get stunned for a few seconds. You'll see right there. Just got stunned and stunned again and stunned again which is kind of an annoying feature in this game. Uh, that guy down in the corner there, a the little gray man running around, that's that's the dog catcher. He, he's trying to catch Chase. So all I had to do was start off at the center there and get to the top of the maze. This is an, a bizarre part of the game. It's almost like one of those little interlude pieces. The food falls from the truck, and you have to hit the button the moment that the food is right parallel with Chase. Um, not hard to do, I guess, in the earlier stages, but when the game starts getting faster and faster, then it picks up, and actually is quite challenging. You just get bonus points for that. So now I'm being, looks like a, a bone is being thrown around here, and uh, that's that's not good. Um, I'm finding that the, the, the dog catcher guy in the corner there always seems to be just stuck in one area, which is kind of weird. I can kind of just run around here and nothing's happening. Oh, I ran out of time. See, I'm, I'm goofing off here. Uh, yeah, you can see down here, I think that's one of the differences too with the, with the difficulty set, settings, if I uh, could be wrong though. Uh, it's got a timer, so you got about 20 or 30 seconds or so to get your butt there. And I'm running. Um, there's only one speed. There's there's just no. You can't you know, use the button to do anything. So uh, obviously getting hit by that bouncing ball thing is not a good thing because it takes away from your time. Oh, made it. Okay. So then it goes to uh, this stage again, which it's dropping a little bit faster. I think I just missed it. Oh well. Oh, no, I got it. And then we go to the third maze, which you can see the mazes are getting a little bit uh, bigger, harder to get your dog through. Uh, that looks like a cat that's trying to chase me now. Uh, again, that dog catcher is just like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, oh, I think I know where I have to go. Uh, so I'm going to just keep running here. I think once you get closer to the top, you, you pretty much got it. You pretty much nailed it. And there we are. We've just made it to the top. I don't know if I'm doing well with this game, but oh, I'm sure if I wasn't speaking while I was playing, it'd probably be a little easier. Uh, as you can see, I just missed it. So this is our final stage, and, and it's kind of a wild looking maze. It really uh, it can look confusing when you first glance at it, because the, uh, the exits are all in the same spot. 
so it feels like you know it doesn't seem hard but then when you start oh i just got caught and that's an interesting thing there too i just got caught by a dog catcher but it sounded like i just blasted off on a spaceship so that's kind of weird but i guess they had a limited amount of sound effects to use uh when they were programming these games and uh, perhaps if they didn't have a lot of time to to do it but now that bone is going to be in my way oh here we go okay i think if i just clear this spot here and just run on through and it's up there kind of like a pong thing going on there and there we are again it makes the spaceship sound when you hit the uh the chuck wagon nice little colors graphically it's 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 not bad i mean the game is pretty good it's it's you know i wouldn't i wouldn't go and say it's it's the greatest game in the atari no it's it's definitely there's much better ones but this one has multiple levels so i mean it's got that going for it yeah it's, it's actually not a bad game so I, I would suggest if anybody uh ever gets a chance to pick one of these things up i mean for collectability wise it, it's good and uh if you like the game hey why not uh, it's it's fun and of course you can always get an emulator i mean that's uh always a possibility Anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you sub subscribe and uh, check out our website, uh, thebandcavecinema.ca. Talk to you later. Bye.